Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Christy. I'm a homeschool mom to three, and today is going to be a homeschool update. So it's been a while since I've made an update. We've been going strong in school, very consistent, which I'm really proud of because that was something I wanted to work on this year was consistency. However, on the other end of consistency, we have made quite a few changes in our curriculum and the resources that we're using. So today I am just going to mention kind of the major changes that we've made and kind of overall how our school year is going and some highlights. I am not in this video going to talk about every single piece of curriculum and resource we're using because that would just like take too long. Wait, so first things first with Lacey, we have dropped the Brave Writer Arrow and Beowulf's Grammar and went back to lightning literature. And there's a few reasons why we did this. In short, she really missed lightning literature. She really enjoyed that program last year. I did too, and she missed it. The other thing that I was finding is that with the Brave Writer Arrow Guides, they are very open-ended, which a lot of people really enjoy. I thought I would enjoy that too, but I am finding that I appreciate when there's a daily schedule of what we're doing. I also appreciate kind of like a script to teach from because I find that when I have a lot of information to teach from, in the areas I'm less confident in, it's helpful in teaching the, the concept properly. And then in areas that I'm more confident in, I can always paraphrase or cut it back or teach it in a different way. And I just feel like I can customize and take the info that I need, but I do really like when it is laid out very clearly. Another thing is that my daughter, who is a reluctant writer, um, copy work, which is a big part of the Brave Writer program, is just not her thing. Like she hates it. And so it was definitely a point of tension that I wasn't really, like I didn't feel like that tension was worth it. While I do appreciate the concept of copy work, it's not right for all kids. Another thing is kind of the way that the Brave Writer arrows work is you're picking and choosing a Brave Writer arrow guide. Um, and you can choose different ones. And in that, the grammar concepts jump around. And so you're covering one kind of grammar in, in one, and then you pick a different unit and you're talking about something completely different. And I am noticing that I kind of prefer for grammar for it to just be built upon um, and not kind of like this web style of learning. I also feel like that's kind of how gather round or the unit studies work as well. You're jumping around as far as language arts skills, you're jumping around different concepts and you're picking different units and you're, you know, it's not like a linear learning happening. And I'm finding that with grammar specifically, I like more of like it being built upon. Beowulf's grammar, um, we didn't love. Now, there's nothing wrong with it, and I think that the reason that we really didn't kind of love it is just because my daughter is kind of on the older age range of that program. I think that it would definitely work better for kind of that lower to middle elementary student. My daughter is in sixth grade, technically. She's 11, and so it was kind of just a little bit simple for her. Um, the crafts and the hands-on things are cool and they're fun, but I definitely think that she would have gotten more out of it if this was like the first time she was studying grammar. But it seemed too simplistic for kind of what level she is at with grammar. But it is a cute program, so if you do have kind of that younger child, you may wanna look into it as kind of a fun option. For math, okay, so math has been kind of a journey for us since homeschooling. We have kind of flopped around trying to kind of find the best flow and routine with math and resources that click and work well and it's been challenging. I knew that going into teaching math with Emmett and Isla eventually, I wanted to start on a good foot. Like I wanted a strong program that I could really build that foundation 
and kind of start from scratch. The opportunity to start at the beginning with their math journey is just like amazing to me. And so I'm really excited for that. And we actually landed on Matthew C. And so we are using Matthew C Primer with Emmett, who is in kindergarten. And there is math in the letters and numbers that he's finishing up with Gather Round, but it's very basic, like learning to write your numbers and counting and like very basic addition. So he is ready for more. I knew that adding this in would be something that would benefit him and he would really like because it would be more of a challenge. We just started using Matthew C about two, three weeks ago and I'm already in love. And I try not to say that about a curriculum that I'm using for such a short time, but have you ever had a curriculum that just clicks with a certain child? And it's just like the perfect puzzle piece fit for them because this has been with Emmett. Matthew C really works for him. Like he loves it. I love the hands-on aspect of it and he learns really well with hands-on things. I'm finding that more and more. He's very hands-on. And so this is a hands-on curriculum, but it also oddly enough is very open and go. And I find that that's a difficult balance. We're doing really well with it. Like he's learning place value through the hundreds already. He's learning addition and he just loves math. He has so much fun with it and he's catching on to all of these concepts that I thought were going to be difficult to teach him and explain to him. But Matthew C just makes it so simple. The way that it's worded and taught and shown, it's just simple and it's easy to teach and we're just really, really loving it and he's thriving with it. When I was purchasing my Matthew C resources, which I got all on eBay, by the way, so if you are ever interested in curriculum that are a little bit, you know, pricier, check eBay first. While I was purchasing and gathering my resources, I decided that maybe I'd try it out with Lacey too because maybe she needs a different kind of approach uh, like a visual breakdown or something. And so we ended up doing alpha with her, which is like, you know, addition and subtraction. It's like really simple. And we fast tracked through the book. So I actually didn't purchase the workbook for her for that level. I just had her watch the DVD lesson, work along with him while they're doing kind of the sample problems. And then I would make my own problems based on the lesson for her to solve, you know, like on a whiteboard or something like that. We ended up doing like a few lessons a day. We skipped a lot of what was too easy that she already knew. And then we would do like three or four lessons a day just to kind of fast track her, but also get her used to the Matthew C approach and the way things are done with Matthew C. She finished L Alpha in about two weeks and we moved into beta and we are also doing the same thing with beta and we are you know fast tracking through that as well and then once we get into gamma we will probably move more at a normal pace we might fast track it a little bit but I actually do have the student book for that one and so I'm planning on kind of doing it more normally um, multiplication is something that is definitely different in Matthew C than it is in other programs so I knew I I needed to start there for sure with her to get her familiar with that method. If we can move through that quickly and get her into the next one, I'm excited for that, but I think that it's gonna be a good program. I wouldn't say she loves it, but I am convinced that she's just, at this point, she's not going to love any math curriculum, I don't think. She just, it's not her favorite subject, and it's okay. It's okay if she doesn't love it, but I'm tired of jumping around, and so I'm really, really, really trying to make this one work for the long haul. I love that it starts at the very beginning and goes all the way through calculus, so I don't have to worry about changing programs in higher levels or anything like that. So, so far, Matthew C is working really great for us, and I hope hope, hope, hope that this is it and we can just like make this our curriculum for the long haul. Okay, so moving into kind of our unit study approach, as you can tell, we have shifted to using a traditional language arts, well, it's a literature-based language arts curriculum. Gather Round is not like our sole focused curriculum, like our core, like I planned it to be. I have mixed feelings about that because I wanted the unit study to be it. I wanted it to work for us, 
but I don't know why I can't fully surrender to the gather round method. Um, it's just the jumping around for like core important subjects kind of, I just can't get used to it. So yes, we've added in language arts. We've only done farming and food. And in that the grammar concepts were, you know, very basic. Like she'd already learned that. So she wasn't learning anything new in that as far as language arts go. However, like the science and the history and like all of that was really cool. We enjoyed learning about farms and all the different kinds of processes they go through. And it inspired a lot of conversation which I love when our school can turn that way and I can get conversations out of Lacey because she can be kind of the kid that doesn't offer a lot of opinions or input sometimes when it comes to schoolwork. So I do appreciate that part of it and what that brought out of her. However, we were almost finished with farming and food and we got really bored with learning about farms. <laughs> so we ended up kind of switching gears, pausing that, switching gears and jumping into campfire curriculums through the eyes of a zoologist. And we really are enjoying that. That's a really fun curriculum. There's not like student worksheets that they have to do every day. So it's more, we're kind of using it more as like a read aloud type situation with like everybody and we also will do the QR codes and do all like the videos and like the little activities and stuff and it's just kind of fun. It's very relaxing. I like that it doesn't have all the subjects so it's kind of like a extracurricular I guess like a bonus like interest led type thing we're doing. It does have a core connections that you booklet that you can add in there that expands upon and gives you more so that you can make it your core curriculum if you wanted to. Um, but we're just enjoying the very chill style of it. We don't do one full lesson every day. We usually set a timer for about 20 minutes and do as much as we can then. And then we have like make sure we're at a good stopping point and then we'll continue it the next day. Um, we haven't been doing it every single day. Lately, our homeschool has kind of been a little bit um, like drawn out. I'm not sure why, because like earlier in the year, we were getting everything done super quickly and efficiently. And lately, I just feel like it's dragging on and we're, uh, things are just taking us longer. And I am definitely somebody who values short school days. And so I won't add in that extra stuff if we're kind of creeping up to being too long for our school day. I really try to get school done by around lunchtime. If we go much past that, like it just feels too long and I lose kind of the engagement for my kids anyway. So really what good is doing school longer if I'm not engaged with them? So I do value shorter school days. And so if it is running a bit longer, we won't do it that day. Um, but overall we've been probably averaging every other day with that. So another thing that we've been really loving with our homeschool routine are our Fridays. Fridays are a lot more relaxed than the rest of our week. And actually we go hard with school Monday through Wednesday and then Thursday it's a little bit more relaxed and then Friday's really relaxed. And we're really enjoying that routine. It just kind of gives us a breath at the end of our week and eases us into the weekend and we just love it. So Fridays we've been using for our slow down curriculum which is our nature study which we have been loving and then our our art we also do on Friday. So I alternate art and nature study. So one week we'll do art, the next Friday we will do slow down. So those are going super well and we love them. And then we also do beautiful feet books on Thursday and Friday, the uh, around the world with picture books, which we also really love. Thursday and Friday are when we do group learning, which I really value group learning. I think there's a huge benefit from that. And we also really enjoy kind of coming together and doing these fun subjects like geography and art are just fun and relaxing and like no pressure subjects. There's a lot of creativity happening in both of those and a lot of just like literature and discussion. And we just really, really enjoy those Fridays. Hi, editing Christy here. I realized I totally forgot to talk about Isla's preschool. So I'm gonna do that now. Isla's preschool is going really well. We are using Purely Preschool by Where'd You Learn That, which is such a sweet, simple, 
open and go preschool curriculum. We really enjoy Purely Preschool. It's very fun, engaging, and short and sweet, which we love. The other program that we've been kind of alternating with is Primer with Pooh from A Year of Learning, which is also a beautiful curriculum with those Winnie the Pooh stories, which we love. We don't use everything from because it's a very full curriculum that she's not ready for all of that right now. So we take a lot of the fun things from it, like the crafts, the baking, the sensory play, the reading of the stories, and we just use those. So we've been having a lot of fun with both programs, and she's doing really, really well with preschool. Often Emmett joins in on these activities because they're so much fun, so it's going well. Okay, so now that I've kind of talked about curriculum, um, something I do want to mention is like, I feel like I want to talk about something we're doing really well in homeschooling and then something we need to work on. Um, I think that that's a really good kind of thing to end this video with. So something I think we're doing well with is consistency. I think that we are, you know, utilizing all of our resources very consistently and doing well with that. We've kind of gotten into a good routine, I feel like. Um, you know, interruptions happen, of course, but I think that we're doing really well with that and I'm seeing growth from that. Something I think that we need to work on is not really an academic thing it is more of heart issues i feel like we have a little bit of you know high attitudes lately and stress and our homeschools kind of spiraled because of that and it just feels stressful and chaotic without going into too much detail for personal reasons um, i feel like you kind of sometimes struggle with this in your homeschool um, whether it's with a particular child or all of the children and a lot of times if they are reluctant to learn or they are not into, you know, doing or not wanting to do their schoolwork or giving you some kind of attitude or frustration, like you as the mom and as the homeschool mom, it can be really hard to keep calm and patient with them and sometimes attitudes given back. And I feel like there's a lot of that kind of back and forth lately. Like I get frustrated because of their behavior or attitudes and so it just doesn't solve anything it just makes this big like ball of stress and so there's some attitude adjustments that we all need to work on some heart issues and that's not something that's like a quick fix um, hopefully we can kind of you know make slow progress with that but it's definitely something I see right now as kind of throwing our homeschool off a little bit and we need to reshift our focus in some areas, I think. And I think doing that will also kind of um, calm the chaos. So that is all for my homeschool update. I hope that this video wasn't too long. It's really, really hard to kind of you know, keep these condensed because I get really chatty about resources we're using. But I hope that you guys enjoyed. Please let me know how your homeschool is going. Tell me something that's going well in your homeschool and something you need to work on in your homeschool down below. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you in another video very soon.